So uh, welcome. Thanks so much for, for uh, taking the time to, to join us today. My name's uh, Josh Good. I'm the Vice President of Strategy and Market Development here at Click. So that means I spend all my time thinking about what's the next thing we're going to be doing. How are we going to move into the market? What's going to happen with AI? Not next week, next, you know, next month, next quarter, more like next year, three years out, four years out, and, and so forth. So I'm going to kick off just a, a quick little bit about how we're thinking about the whole market, and then we'll dive down really deep into what we're doing here um, and, and get into those, those tech, really the, the technical stuff with some great things from, from our presenters. This is an overview of the, uh, of the agenda today. And um, here's all the speakers who you'll see. So you know who's coming up and, and who they are. Um, and it's just to have it all, all there. And, and you know, any of them would be happy to connect with you after, you know, hit them up on social media as, as, as we already, already mentioned. Um, and yeah, so this, we're at Click Connect, just for anyone who missed that. Uh, and, uh, and thank you for coming down to Orlando. Um, we will be doing one next year. We'll announce where that's going to be. And it's going to be almost as good as this one. No, no, it, it, they'll, they'll be better every, every year. Uh, but first, where I'll start is, is what, right at the top, is, is what's our vision and, and what's our, our, our strategic goal. And I think the strategic goal, visions are really nice and they tell you what we're doing. But when you look at the strategic goal, that's what Click is actively working towards as a business and how we're trying to, 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 um, to really make these impacts with using data, analytics, and AI um, to really solve tough problems. And, and not just problems that are, um, you know, inherent to, the, uh, to, 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 to our customers, but also like the, it ultimately works out to solving some of the world's toughest challenges, whether it's around poverty or whether it's around transportation and logistics. And these are all really important things that, that affect um, uh, people every day. Uh, and, you know, we've been doing a lot of progress on that and I'm really excited. So I thought it would be worthwhile just to bring up a few of the announcements that we did. This is just the last 12 months. And, you know, some highlights there, uh, you know, Click Answers was launched. Um, Click Talent Cloud was launched. Um, we, we did a, the AI reality tour, which was, you know, we went all over the world to, to, to talk about um, what we're, do, what we're doing. We acquired Upsolver. Um, but we also did some really great things for our customers. Uh, we launched two new cloud regions. Um, we've had, a, a, you know, numerous enhancements that come out regularly um, in, in, all, in all of our products. And then another more recent thing is uh, we just announced we closed a, um, a new investment. And it's interesting, new investment is um, uh, Idea came in um, as an investor with Click, and our, our current primary uh, owner, uh, Tom Bravo, they reinvested, which is really, really uh, rare when you, um, for, a, for an organization like Tom Bravo to come in and not only you know be with a click for so many years, but then come in again and say you know we're so confident in what's happening. And as somebody who thinks about strategy, I thought that was a really interesting external validation about what. We're doing. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I actually came from the product side, so I really want to get to the product stuff. But uh, knowing that we're, what we're doing is not just, just being validated by the techies, but also by the wider market. And it is really a good sign that, that, that we're, we're on the right track. And when we look at being on the right track, I think a lot about what are the trends in the market. And um, we have a whole trends um, publication we put out every year. And I pulled three of the, I think the, the really the, the thrusting um, uh, push around where the trends are coming from. And the first one, of course, is agents. Has everyone's heard of an agent? Yeah. You know, it, it's, it's amazing how agent has completely replaced Gen AI. Um, what people are talking about in terms of hype. Um, and that's going to, you know, agents are fundamentally going to change the way we, we operate um, as a species, um, not just in the data and analytics space as a species. It's, it's going to be a big, big change. We know that. But the other, there's a, a counterpoint that's happening on that, what we find really interesting, which is around applied value. So we've moved, what we're, we're, we're seeing is we've moved beyond the hype in terms of getting the of AI. And, and now there's a lot of questions about applying value. And are you actually getting that value? That reaches back into to authenticity. Uh, so is the, uh, the value we're getting authentic, but also is the data that we're using um, authentic? Is, are we getting real business results or are we getting you know, AI hype uh, out of things? And when we look at how we're thinking about what we're doing with Click is we, we look at it from a lot of different angles, but you can see like data readiness is a huge theme that you'll hear 
throughout the conference here and actually been hearing for quite a while from Click. And, and that ties right into that authenticity trend uh, that, that, that's being discussed. Um, and then also being business focused, you know, Click itself, I've been with Click for uh, maybe 15 years in December. Um, and, and we've always been very business focused around driving that value out to the, to the, to the, from the data. So it's, you know, it's not about how much data you have, it's how much value you're going to get from your data is how we think about it. Uh, and there's lots of pieces along the value chain that, that need to be delivered in order to, 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 to do that. Uh, and that just ties right into the applied value. And, um, and, and then the, the last is, you know, everything needs to be timely and, and uh, I, we think about fast action. You know, the, uh, the tragedy of data and analytics is the amount of work that's done and then the number of times someone goes, hmm, I'll just go with my gut at the end of it. Uh, and so being able to take action directly from that analysis uh, and that we, we see agents as a real big uh, opportunity uh, to do that. So, you know, how are we going to plug agents right into the analysis and enable uh, our, our customers to take direct action from that? And then also, how can agents make it easier for that entire chain to, to be utilized? So, you know, you're, you're lowering the uh, the effort needed to put in to get the value the value out. Uh, when we look at where we're going to pull the, the the levers for value, there's five levers we're pulling at Click to our customers get more value. And some of them are a little bit more about click and some of them are more about specifically about the software, but I think they all interrelate really, um, really well. So the first is our capacity model. For, for those of you who aren't totally familiar with it, we've moved all of our cloud software to a capacity-based model. So that means you buy a capability, a certain amount to do the various things you're going to do, whether it's moving data, whether it's, it's doing data quality, whether it's doing analysis, whether it's running uh, a models, and you have up to that amount that you can, you can do. So you're not, you're not always on a meter, you're not always worried about, you know, am I, am I gonna, what's the bill going to be? Um, and, and, but you, know, you more have the right amount that you need. Um, and then you know, over time, if you change your use cases, you, know, you'll, you'll, you, can, you can purchase additional. But it also means that we include a lot more capabilities in the product, because, you know, um, the funny thing, like I'll, I'll use car buying as an example, you know, you know, they always, you know, the traditional thing is to show you the engine and tell you how great the engine is. And why do you love the car? You love the car for the cup holders, right? You know, you don't know what that thing is you're going to love it for. The same thing's true with software, right? You, you, you purchase software often for, for a reason and it delivers on that, but the reasons you love it and the reasons it's a game changer isn't always the way you quite, you quite understood when you, when you purchased the software. So we're taking that that approach of making many more capabilities available to our customers and using this capacity model and unlimited users so that the organization can get full value out of the software and also experiment with more use cases as they come up. The cross-sell, that's our, our efforts as we brought a Click and Talon and we brought a Tunity in. Um, we have customers who traditionally came from data integration and customers who traditionally came from analytics and we're doing a whole lot in the products and in our way we're going to market to help it, to make it easier for customers to utilize those capabilities across the entire platform. And that gives them more value. We're seeing actually a consolidation in the market where um, the best in breed, the modern data stack approach, um, customers are finding that that's too difficult to integrate. And they're looking for less vendors uh, and Click is perfectly positioned as a uh, independent vendor who has a end-to-end -end platform to be able to do that. So we're exposing that more to, to, to our customers. We're also accelerating the transition to cloud. A lot of the innovation is coming to cloud. And uh, you know, we announced that um, we have new tooling available now uh, uh, with uh, Stretch Connect uh, that we just acquired, as well as the other announcements around um, providing um, free tenants to our customers who are currently on-prem so they can start experimenting with cloud and additional investments in terms of helping our customers move to cloud. Uh, and then, of course, we're all in on AI. I mean, being all in on AI is an easy thing to say, but as you've seen with the announcements that we've uh, we come out with around Click Answers, around our new agentic uh, framework, uh, and also the AI we're putting directly into the product to assist uh, um, with using our, our products is is a, a big, big effort that, that that we're working here. And you know, we'll hear a whole section on that um, uh, later. And then the last thing is really not technically focused, but is um, is so essential to success in technology is the ecosystem and clicks the organization at Click as well. So we put a lot of effort into the way our go-to-market works, the way our services delivery 
um, happens and also our partner ecosystem so that there's an op there's um, a, a better chance of success or a more likely chance of success. And more importantly is when things go kind of off the rails, which you know, unfortunately, you know, you're pushing the boundaries. Sometimes things don't go according to the way you hoped. Um, we have those capabilities to help write that ship with our customers. And we have a, I call them, um, you know, bonding events. Um, you know, where, where things don't go quite as you might have planned, but we want to make sure we're there every step away with our customers. And it ties right back, if you know, into the capacity model, because that whole model is built around customers having success and wanting to do more with our products. So we have to make sure we, we have that whole ecosystem. That's the thing I love about the way this is all set up, is it's in clicks incentivized to make sure the customers are successful. Um, so that the customers, you know, stick and stay with click um, in the long term, which works works well for Click as a business, but also is what our, our ultimate uh, focus is. And when you look at our platform, you know, you've probably seen this slide four or 500 times. Um, you know, this is our entire platform, whether working from the, the AI foundation where you're making your data ready and that's our data quality and our data integration capabilities to the, to the AI solutions, uh, which is our, our analytics and AI capabilities and how that all comes together and we have, um, AI helping run all of that and underpin all of that, and as well as key capabilities there. And then very importantly, the larger ecosystem of our partners. And you're going to hear, actually, you know, our, our partnerships are so important. The next presentation won't be click people. We're going to have AWS come up and, and be part of this because we really, you know, that's foundational is nobody uses technology inside a, um, uh, inside a vacuum. The interesting thing about our platform is how adaptable and open it is though. And um, I put together this slide and this is a history of how our platform has been built. And you'll notice that there's an equal amount or, or uh, I don't know if it's equal, but you could say there's a, there's a good amount of organic and inorganic growth. And that's one of Click's superpowers is we've worked really hard to have great innovation internally, but then also know that all good ideas don't start necessarily with us. And there's always opportunities to bring in other technologies. And you know, we've moved from being a, you know, a, a full enterprise class analytics platform to where we are today, which is you know, a platform for customer AI. Uh, uh, and to get our customers to be able to enable them to be successful in AI, whether that means using AI, getting data ready for AI, innovating using our AI or integrating with, with their own AI or other third, third party AI. And you can see how that, that stepping has gone and in terms of, it always looks nicer with the logos, uh, um, but the bottom stuff, all the, the organic is really there. And then the, the right-hand side is where we are today and where we're innovating and some of the opportunities that, that we see uh, while we innovate you know, this year and, and, and beyond. Josh, um, you, you uh, click, click, you know, pretty much as a natural extension of what you guys have been doing, you moved into AI, um, comparatively speaking, with everything moving at lightning speed right now, actually quite a while ago. I think Big Squid was like 2020 or something. Uh, so actually, yeah, if you want to get, so 2018? Oh, so yeah, Big Squid was Big 2020, Squid. but we did Crunch Data, which was a chat bot, which turned into Click Insight Advisor in 2018. And actually the associative engine uses machine learning to, to figure out what it does. So we've actually been doing AI since 1993, if you want to like really pull it back. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but yeah There's yeah. lots of folks who are saying quite correctly that AI has been around quite some time. I think the big difference is generative AI and the large language models and that sort of thing. Um, and that leads to my question, which is there's a little bit of market confusion over this sort of thing. People hear AI right now, they just think generative AI and large yeah. language models. Um, how are you working with customers so that they understand the, the predictive AI routes that really help them with the core offer versus the generative AI that ex enhances what they're doing, enhances their user experience, that sort of thing? Yeah, so we talk about using all AI um, and we talk about predictive AI, um, which is we, some people call it traditional AI, but that's all, all of that, that basket there and, and goes back to uh, Click Predict, which was called uh, Click Auto ML before. And, you know, we had the big squid heritage, as you yeah. as, as you mentioned, um, and then we talk about generative AI because you know people want to hear about that. And now we're talking about agentic AI as well. So we're separating generative and, and agentic um, a, 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 as well. So we talk a lot about that. And I know in our presentation here, and I can't remember if it's my slides or I think it might be uh, Nick's slides. Nick's raising his hand back there. Yeah, it's Nick's in Nick's slides. He'll talk in more detail about how we're we're, we're highlighting that to our customers and actually. Um, 
Gartner says that over 50% of AI will be predictive AI, not generative AI. Um, and we, we agree with that. Uh, so, so it, but it, the, the, the way we, to get right to the heart of your question, how do we uh, enable customers to do that? We just put it right in the product and make it easy to use. And they don't really, like, they don't need to know in some ways. Like, is that generative AI? Is that predictive AI? Just, you know, I don't know. I'm getting results from my business and I'm happy, right? And, that, and that's impactful. So we're trying to make the user experience really, really easy. So you just naturally use it. You don't do this big, like, now I'm going to use AI. And, you know, it's just, oh, no, I was using Click and I used the stuff and it worked great and it helped me. Does that mean putting layers on, like, AutoML, for example? Because that, obviously, that is an AI activity. Yeah. Yeah, so like when we launched AutoML, you had to go to the AutoML module and use it there. And now, right in the product today, and actually it was last year we announced it, we were doing some, um, some levels where we were running models in the background and then returning results to you. Um, multivariant time series is now built right into there. So you just you know, click the button and bang, you have multivariant time series. So you, now you're doing AI with, with hitting a checkbox. Right? So, so that's, Excellent. that's one aspect of it. And then there's the other part we should talk about is all the integrations we do with other other AIs like, like Bedrock yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah, cool. Um, so I'm running tight on time. I want to get to the technical stuff. So, you know, I, I thought it was worthwhile to, you know, just do a little bit of a brag slide here of like, you know, the results speak for themselves, right? Like we're seeing really, really good results from our customers. And this is, you know, using AI and, and using using traditional data and analytics um, as, as well. And it, it's pretty impressive on, on, on what's, and I hope you all have a chance to, you know, talk to some of our customers around the show because it's uh, they're, they're an excited bunch um, and it's, it's really, really great to see. And we think the future is is pretty exciting as well. You know, so where I where I see us going from a strategic perspective is we're going to, you know, we're going to do a whole lot more around Agentic. I mean, everyone's saying they're going to do a whole lot more around Agentic, but, you know, our announcements around our framework is proof of that. And what we see is, you know, with the uh, Click Answers being the first thing that we're releasing on that new framework, the, the new version of Click Answers, uh, is um, it, it, it's been a, a bunch of work, but now we have that framework and we're gonna be able to release things faster and faster um, around the agenda side. Um, uh, AI uh, data readiness, we're, we're gonna put a whole lot of, of, of effort into you know, making data AI ready, but also we will use AI to help you make data AI ready. When the data prep, uh, you know, finding anomalies, um, uh, recommendations and then you know actually taking action on that and then the other is in the in the agent we also we see we believe in the multi-agent architecture we we think there's going to be multiple agents clicks going to have agents that are the best at doing data and analytics and then there's going to be someone else who has agents who are doing other things um that uh you know will will we'll also be able to uh to um to to, to work with and th and that agent to agent connectivity we think is going to be really key in the future because that's that's going to be the APIs of the future, uh, is, is kind of how I, I'm thinking about it. So without any further ado, um, if there's any other questions or anything, we can jump in if you have any other questions for me. Otherwise, I'm going to pass it on. So on the agent-to-agent -agent connectivity, yeah. or are you mainly looking towards the greater industry, like what Google has on with their A to A protocol? Like, where are you guys envisioning agent-to-agent, -agent, the, the center of gravity of that? to be? I don't think we know that yet. Um, you know, I think you'll see the hyperscalers, Google, AWS, they're going to have their own agent. Salesforce has agent force, you know, they're all going to have theirs. Mm -hmm. um, what I think is going to happen is, is, you know, those hyperscalers, they'll have their own little, their, their own ecosystem. I can say little, it's not going to be a little ecosystem. They'll have a very substantial ecosystem. Um, but what I think the other interesting thing that's going to happen is, is you're going to need to bring those ecosystems together. And then there's going to be new players as well. And there's no one better to save me on this answer than our head of AI. Uh, uh, Segway. <laughs> Segway to Nick, and he can add to that. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I would <clears throat> echo a couple of things. So, yeah, I don't know that we know entirely what protocols are going to be widely adopted. It does seem like MCP, right, given the big names are now behind it. We've got AWS in the room. They're behind it. That's certainly something that we're, we're doing work on. Um, A2A, as Google has put out, also another very interesting way in which agents can, can, can communicate together. Um, I foresee that that's going to be a big thing. And then you've got agent marketplaces that are springing up um, where I do think you're going to have off the shelf agents that you can just grab and start using, integrate across the same ecosystem. So um, it is still a bit early, but clearly people are putting a lot of investment in this area. So I think it's something that, uh, you know, it's going to, it's got legs.